Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Gospel Lesson Part 9. In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at some um, common gospel progressions. Uh, fairly simple progressions, but really important to know nonetheless. And just some progressions that we can basically use with everything that we've been working on thus far with, you know, some of our bigger chords, some of the triads, um, the diminished chords, um, maybe some two-note voicings. Um, so yeah, just kind of implementing, you know, everything that we've been working with thus far and uh, making some music with it. So I am going to be explaining all these progressions uh, with numbers. So just as a really quick kind of crash course to using numbers, if we use a scale, we can um, label every note in the scale with a number. So if I play C major, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then we'd start over again at 1. Okay, now each of those uh, each of those tones has a chord connected to it. So if I play these with like open triads, we'd have, uh, and you might want to be writing this down as well, one is major, two and three are minor, four and five are major, uh, six is also minor, uh, seven is diminished, and then we're back up at one where we had started with. Okay, now if we add extensions to those, so if we add one more note, um, to the actual chord or plane, we'll get all our seventh chords, which is mainly what, we, what we'll be working with today. So, uh, first chord would be major seven, then two minor sevens, or the two would be minor seven, and the three would be a minor seven. Four is going to be another major seven. Five is going to be a dominant seven. Six is going to be a uh, minor seven as well. Seven is going to be a minor seven flat five. And then we'll be back up where we started one octave up at one again. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick crash course. So just so you know what I'm saying, you know what, if I'm saying like the two or the five chord, you'll understand that the two is going to be minor seven, and then the five is going to be dominant seven. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get started with all this stuff. Again, I'll just, we'll be kind of going over these in C major for today, but you guys should take them through all 12 keys, you know, and get really, you know, get really solid at, at playing all these progressions. Because, um, you know, like I said, these are going to be some, some really important kind of groundwork progressions. So let's just start off really simple. Um, we'll just take a look kind of at the 1-4-5 at the first of all. Alright guys, so the 1-4-5 progression. Um, we're just going to start this with C major, C major 7, kind of one of the first shapes we'd actually looked at. Okay, so right here. Super simple. Then we'll go down to... And F major 7, right here with the root on the 6th string. Okay, so we're going to have one of the E, two of the D, and the G, and then one of the B. Okay, that's our F major 7 chord. And up to a G dominant 7, which is another shape we had looked at. It's our standard dominant 7 shape. Okay, and then we're back to 1. Okay, so pretty simple, or we could play that up here as well, going up the fretboard, and going to um, like a major 7 here with the root on the 6th string, so pretty simple. Okay, so we could spice that up a little bit, maybe we could um, drop the 3rd in each of those chords, so I'm just going to take my pinky off for every single one of those chords and then it go down to the bar that the pointer's doing. Adding the six in. So you get the idea with that. Um, that's really simple, you know, uh, you know, just a standard progression. You could even, if we were like doing a blues, you could make each of those dominant seven. Go down to the dominant seven here, root six. Okay, and then adding the six in there as well. So, um, pretty simple stuff. So that's just the kind of the one four um, progression. So simple enough there. You know, most of you guys probably know that already, but you know, you should work that out in all the keys as well, and you'll hear that a lot in. Uh, in some gospel tunes and stuff, so just kind of be looking out for that. Um, you could also play that, you know, with just open triads maybe, or closed, either one. If we played it, um, you know, right here, starting with an open triad, root position, now to the F, second inversion. Now we're going to go to the G um, in first inversion, so. 
Okay, now we can maybe move it up to another position, starting with the C in first inversion, F in root position, and then uh, G in second inversion, and back up to C, then maybe to another string set. And uh, forgive me, uh, we're just not going to have time to cover all these shapes today, where my fingers are going for all of them. Um, like I had said, these have kind of been all covered in the last uh, gospel lessons. Um, Kind of the main thing I'm just trying to do today is just kind of bring everything together into some musical, you know, into some musical ideas. So uh, if you don't know some of these shapes and stuff, just go back, check out the other lessons. Uh, it's all explained pretty in depth in all those um, in all those lessons. So yeah, so you could work the one four five out with those um, open triads as well. You know, closed if you wanted to. I mean, you could try them with just some simple two note voicing. So maybe like the C and the E here. And then to the F, you could go to the A and the C, then the B and the D when you're moving up to the G, and then here would be another C, another way to play F, another way to play B, and then ending off at C, maybe using sixes, here we go to the F again, to the G, okay, which if you're doing like smaller two note voicings, you might want to record just like lay down a little bass track for yourself um, just so you can kind of hear bass notes underneath what you're doing so you kind of have like a point of reference. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the 145. Let's uh, now move on to another really uh, common one and that's the 14 flat 7. All right guys, so you hear the 14 flat 7 all over the place. This is another um, really really common progression. So what we're basically going to have is so you're gonna have one just C major seven again. Okay, then the four, F major seven. Then I'm gonna be playing a B flat major seven, which is the flat seven of the key. Normally seven in C major is going to be B or B diminished in this case. This time we're gonna flat it, and then it's gonna become a major seven. So B flat major seven. Okay, so really nice sounding uh, progression there. We could also make that B flat a dominant seven. So which also sounds really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the one four flat seven idea there. Um, sounds really, really pretty, and you hear that you know, again, all over the place, and that's really popular in rock especially, but um, if you really kind of tune in, you'll start hearing that flat seven resolving to one a ton in music, you know, not necessarily even just gospel all the time, but uh, just any popular music basically, so it's kind of, um, you know, one of those progressions that's just, you know, just used everywhere. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a good one to take a look at. Again, you can play that with like your open triad, so you could go you know, C, then up to F, then up to B flat in um, second version here, and back down to C. Okay, so easy stuff. You could do it with closed um, triads as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the one four flat seven idea there. So uh, again, work that out through a whole bunch of different keys, um, and you know, kind of try to be listening to that in a lot of popular songs that you're hearing because you know like I had said that's a really easy progression to hear when that flat seven is resolving up to the one or if it's dominant seven as well so another sweet progression to take a look at let's move on to the one two three four now all right guys so the one two three four pretty simple progression just uh, like what it sounds like so it's just going to be one two, three, four. Okay, and normally at the end of that it should probably be called like one, two, three, four, five because we're normally going to be adding a five onto the end of that. Okay. So yeah, like I said, it's just going to be, you know, one, two, three, four, and it's just going to be major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, and it'll usually end off with that dominant seven, 
you can suspend that just by moving your pinky up one uh, fret and resolve it. <coughs> Excuse me, and then end off at just our, our one chord. And um, just as a really quick side note, here's a really great, um, this is kind of like a, a 6 9 type of sound with no third in it. Um, this is a chord that is totally movable and it sounds great. You'll probably end up using this a lot. Okay, so I'll just show you the shape really quick. It's going to be 8 of the low E, then a double bar on the D and the G at the 7th fret um, with a pointer finger, and then 8th fret of the B with the ring finger. And then the root is going to be on the low E for that. <coughs> Excuse me, and then you can also add your pinky on to the 10th fret. To add another 9 in. And like I said, that's also movable. That's a great, great little shape to know for sure. That sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the one, two, three, four. Now we could, like we had talked about in the uh, diminished lesson, we could add a diminished chord before every minor chord. So here's C, C sharp diminished seven, D minor, uh, D sharp diminished seven, E minor, F major, and then now here's here's something that resolves really nicely to the one. It's a sharp four diminished seven. So in this case, it's just going to be F sharp diminished seven. So you can hear how nicely that resolves. So if we put that all together, sounds great. Or you could still resolve up to R five chord, the G dominant seven. So that's kind of the one, two, three, four progression. Again, you can you know use different chords throughout. So you could drop the third and some of the major sevens. Um, you know you could change the the minor seven chords around. Um, you know you could do whatever you wanted to to do with that progression to make the chords a little bit more interesting. But that is um, that's the one, two, three, four. Again, you'll hear that a lot in popular gospel tunes. Um, it's a great progression to know really well. So yeah, take that through all the keys and. Um, now we're going to move on to the 251. Alright, so as many of you might know, the 251 is, you know, a staple in jazz music. It's absolutely everywhere. Um, but it's also used in gospel tunes quite a bit. So there's going to be two different types of 251s we're going to be taking a look at. The first one is a 251 resolving to a major chord. Now that's just going to be, uh, we're just going to take it in C major. So that's just going to be D minor 7. Dominant seven to our C major seven, so easy stuff. And we can alter um, the five chord if we want to. Now, what that basically means is adding a sharp five, a flat five, a sharp nine, or a flat nine in. Um, for now, let's just try adding a sharp five. Here's our standard shape. We're just going to swap out our pinky for our ring, and then add our pinky to the fourth. Uh, excuse me, yeah, fourth fret of the B string. Okay, so now we get this. Sounds a little weird by itself. But you can hear how nicely that resolves to a uh, home bass or one chord. Okay, so that is basically a major 251. Now a minor 251 is a little bit different. Basically the two chord is a half diminished seven chord. Um, the 5 chord is usually going to be a dominant 7, altered or unaltered, and then the 1 chord is going to be a minor. Um, and in this case we'll be looking at it as a minor 7. So, minor 7 flat 5 chord, well what is that? Well, it's, it's really, really simple. Basically, all that we have to do is all our minor 7 shapes we know, wherever there's a 5th in it, move it 1 fret towards the headstock. Okay, so we're going to do a minor 2, 5, 1 resolving to A minor. So here's what this is going to look like. Let's start with B minor. Now this is a two chord, so we're going to make it B minor, seven, flat five. The fifth is on top right here, so I'm just going to move that one fret towards the head, and we have our minor seven, flat five chord. So super easy. Okay, now moving to the five, which is going to be E, dominant seven. Okay and then resolving to our A minor 7. Okay, so again, 2, 5, 1. OK, 
okay? And that right there is, <coughs> excuse me, what a lot of guys would call a 7-3-6 progression because we're still in C major and that was the 7 chord, a 3, which in this case, normally 3 would be um, a minor 7 in the key of C major, but in this case, since we're resolving this, since we're doing a 2-5-1 kind of to the A, or a 7-3-6, I guess it doesn't really matter what you want to call it, um, it's just going to be the dominant 7 in this case, because it leads so well to the 1. If this is just a minor 7, you can hear it doesn't really have the same effect. So it doesn't lead us as strong back to, um, you know, back to that A minor chord. So at any rate, that's our two types of, um, that's our two types of 2-5-1 progressions. Now, you can play these 2-5-1s, you know, to anything in the key. So you'll get some outside chords, but uh, it just depends on what you're resolving it to. So let me explain this a little more in depth here. So, for instance, if we resolve to C major, C major we're going to have as our one chord. So here's two, D minor seven, five, G dominant seven, one, C major seven. Okay, now let's do a two, five, one to D minor seven. We're still going to be thinking that we're in C, but now we're going to have a couple chords that are technically in the key of C, but it's going to sound really nice. We're going to have E minor seven flat five, A dominant seven, D minor seven. Okay, and then we're going to have D minor 7 again, to G dominant 7, to 1, so you can hear, so you can hear how great that all sounds when you put it, um, put it together. Now let's have um, a 2-5-1 to E minor 7, okay? Now in this case we're going to have F sharp, minor 7, flat 5, B7, minor 7. Okay, so those are 2, 5, 1. Now let's just do 2, 5, 1's going down. So we're going to have 2, 5, 1 to E minor, 2, 5, 1 to D minor, major 2, 5, 1 to C major. So here's what this is going to sound like. Okay, so um, great sounding progression there. You know, we could even have like a 2-5-1 to F major, since we're resolving to a major chord. We're always going to be looking if we're going to resolve to a major chord or a minor chord, and that will kind of determine what we're going to be uh, playing. So, here's resolving to F major, so we're going to have G minor 7, uh, C dominant 7, then F major 7. And we could make that F sharp diminished 7, resolving to E minor. Okay, so the possibilities with this are, you know, endless as you can see. We can play these two five ones resolving all over the place, but then we just have to make sure that we, you know, that we get back to home base. And you can experiment with this all day long and see what kind of cool sounds you could get. You know, you could even, let's say we're doing a two five one to A minor, okay? So B minor seven flat five. E dominant seven. A minor seven. Now let's make that A minor seven and like an A dominant 7, which is going to take us to 2, 5, 1. So, so you get the idea with that. A uh, great little sound there. Um, so yeah, that's the 251, and you know, listen to that, that is uh, absolutely everywhere in the gospel tune. So you'll hear that all the time as you start listening for it. Um, great progression, you know, an absolute must to take that through and, and be extremely confident with that. And you can obviously play that with, you know, all your, all your open triads as well. You know, I'd highly recommend doing that because then you'll have to practice your open triads with like diminished triads. Uh, if you're doing like a minor 2 5 1. So just really quick, you could do D minor right here as an open triad in root position to G in second version to E in root position, or excuse me, to C in root position. Um, first inversion up here, then to root position. Then you go to second version, root, and you know you could go to D.
you get the idea with that. Um, you know, you can play that all over and then, you know, just move around the circle of force or fist, depending on which way you want to go around it. And then just work those out all over the place and you definitely um, will expand your core knowledge in a huge way with that. So um, let's take a look now at the uh, 6251. Alright guys, so the 6251 is just what it sounds like. We're just adding the 6 in before the actual 251. Um, so this is basically going to be in C. We're going to have A minor 7, D minor 7, G dominant 7, C major 7. So, okay, so pretty simple. Now, um, what you can do with this is something that's called quality change. And that just means that we're changing the actual quality of the chord. So in this case, let's change this A minor 7 to an A dominant 7. Okay, and you get a really nice sound. Let's also change the D to a dominant 7 as well. So A7, D7, G7. C major 7. Okay, so another, you know, nice sound there as well. And you can do this 6, this 6, 2, 5, 1, um, resolving to other chords and stuff, but this is kind of another uh, staple progression, really, really common. Um, you'll also hear this progression a lot as you start listening for it. So, um, and a lot of times it helps to just listen to the root movement, um, to even sing the root movement. So, for instance, Okay, so that's the six that's what six two five one actually sounds like. Six two five one. Okay, so then if you're listening for that, you'll probably hear that faster in the bass, and then you can identify um, you know, what the quality of the chord is that the uh, you know the rest of the harmony might be played over that. So whether it's a dominant seven or a minor seven. Once you hear that, it becomes pretty simple to just de you know decide what the harmony is um, over the top of that. So, with all of these, you know, just actually play just the bass, you know, just the bass notes for this. Even two five one, two five one, two five one. You know, play those in a couple different areas. Uh, get used to hearing that, and it'll be a lot more easy to identify. So yeah, that is the 6251 progression though. And again, work that all out. And you can combine um, you know, any of these progressions as you wish now. So you could go, um, let's see, you could go one, four, you go five, you go six, two, five, one. So you know you could you could play these all over the place and you know combine different progressions as you see fit and uh, you know see what kind of music you can come up with and um, you know I love studying progressions because for for a while you know I was so obsessed with studying new chord forms and stuff and getting cool chord sounds that I just knew a bunch of cool chords but didn't really know how to combine them together to make musical progressions and stuff so I think. Studying progressions a lot, understanding progressions, you know, different progressions, um, is just is just awesome because also, you know, it gets you. You can start soloing over different progressions, just thinking, okay, I'm gonna do like um, a one, two, three, four, then a sharp four diminished at the end, and thinking of the scale choices that you'd have to use over that, um, you know, is just is just great. So I I think just you know even going far above and beyond what was covered in this lesson, obviously, and you know. Um, this, you know, all these will, will get you started for sure, but you'll still want to keep studying a lot of different progressions and going to more advanced gospel progressions and stuff. One more that I should go over is basically um, something that's pretty popular to do is to make the two chord a dominant in gospel. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is, okay, we're going to make that two chord minor, then walk it up to another minor. And then to the four, and then maybe to the dominant seven. So, dominant two chord, minor two chord, walking up. And taking us back to home base. So that's just kind of one more um, that you can take a look at. But with all those, taking them through all 12 keys, playing them with 
two notes, three notes, um, the bigger gospel voicings and embellishments, you guys should have enough to keep you busy for um, a long time with all that. So, um, yeah, you know, just learn all that, be comfortable with it, and um, yeah, you definitely should expand your, your core knowledge as you, as you keep going through these. So, at any rate, this concludes um, the gospel series. I've had a ton of fun doing all these lessons for you guys. I think, um, you know, this has been a, a huge help for my plane as well, uh, just going through all this stuff and um, figuring out, you know, hopefully, an easy, you know, fairly easy way to teach it to all you guys. You know, I hope that you all have got a lot out of these lessons and it's been inspiring for your plane, has inspired new ideas for you all. Um, so yeah, I'm still kind of going over some ideas for my next lesson, or my next lesson series, I should say. So, uh, if you guys have any suggest, uh, suggestions or anything that you'd really like to see um, in these lessons, let me know, and I can for sure take a look at um, doing those lesson series for you guys. So, yeah, like I said, I've enjoyed doing this series for you guys a lot, I had a lot of fun. I um, hope you guys have learned some good stuff from this. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys back here for uh, next week for the new lesson series. Again, any suggestions, please comment on my YouTube page. Let me know what you guys would like to see. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys all back here next week. Thanks so much, everyone.